Hi, sweet mama out there. Welcome to the Mama Diaries. This is a quick place to come if you need a word of encouragement and you're having a rough day. I've had a really rough start to my morning. I shouldn't say start. The start was good because I was obedient to doing something I didn't want to do. So that was good. And I started my morning off with God and not going to my phone and doing what I wanted to do originally. And my morning started off really good. The later half of the morning, like four hours, we were just rough on and off. So if you find yourself in that place too, like me, um, I hope you can leave here at least feeling refreshed and encouraged in some way. So with that said, um, I wanted to just share something that has been put upon my heart for myself that I think could bless and benefit you too if you're a mom or anybody for that example, even if you're not a mom and you're a gentleman watching this channel. But I wanted to share... Um, how do we start off our mornings? <laughs> because I found myself in a place the last good week, really good week, maybe week and a half, going to my phone first thing in the morning where that wasn't my habit before and forgetting to pray in the morning, asking for the Holy Spirit and Mary and Jesus to help me for the day. And, you know, my routine of what I was doing and going straight to my phone because I was to be honest, kind of, yeah, becoming a bit obsessed about what I was so interested in. And I was super interested in this topic I wanted to research. And um, it doesn't seem bad when I say that because it sounds like it's something good. But anything that we become obsessed with that is not our Lord God, Jesus Christ, and we put him on the side burner, if you will, maybe for a, back of a, a lack of a better term, is not healthy. So it may look healthy. Oh, I'm researching something I find super interesting and important. But if it's now, now starting to mess with my prayer life and me even desiring to want to be with God anymore, that's where we have to look at our lives and really start evaluating things. Because it hit me yesterday that I have a hard time wanting to, I want to be in communion with God, but I have a hard time getting there and putting in my time to get to that place. And the thought that hit me yesterday um, when I was in adoration with my husband and my kids, that was an awesome, blessed time. I'm happy we got to go. But the thought that came to me that was in there that I know wasn't of myself because I didn't really want to do it, but it answered my question um, that I had for the Lord. And the thought was, is that like somebody we love or we're in love with, is how much we should want to be with God. If you're in love with someone right now, what if, you know, you're married or or you remember how it felt when you were in love when you were just courting or dating or you're in love right now with somebody, you give them all of your time. You're not putting them on the side burner, you know, researching things that are more important than them. You're not putting them last at the last part of your day. You want to be with them. You want to see them. You can't just wait to just be near them and breathe them in all the lovey-dovey stuff, right? <laughs> like you can't wait to just be in their presence and touch them and hug them and hold them and hear their voice. You can't wait to be with them. That's love. That's when you're really in love with someone. And we often can see that through our family members. Like my papa loved me. I know he, I, when he passed away, I knew without a shadow of a doubt, he, that man loved me. He called me all the time. He cared for me so much. And it got me thinking with myself, like, man, like I want to be in a certain place with God in my life, but I'm resisting to put in the time because it means really at the end of the day that I'm last because when you think about that, you know, when you love someone, okay, let's put it in human terms. When you love someone, you're in love with someone, you want to be with them and put them first. Even if it's something you may not really want to do, you just want to be with them. And when you don't love someone, you love yourself more. You're often putting yourself first. You're becoming narcissistic in that sense. And um, I think that Maybe some of us are out there, myself included, where our relationship is kind of narcissistic with God. And I didn't think about that. And it kind of makes me kind of like, wow, you know, I, I'm so quick to judge certain things I see in other people like being self-centered. And yet here I am being self-centered in my relationship with my Lord. And so I encourage you if you're out there, gentlemen watching this video, you're a mom like me, to ask God to help you to fall 
in love with him and to want to devote devote your time to him and be with him above doing things that you're super interested in like me i love to research stuff that's my hobby i love it but i um have made it you know an idol in a sense above my god i have and so if you have something in your life that you're making an idol above god above your lord that just wants to be with you and love you and commune with you i'm not saying you have to be with god like talk to him all day long okay but that's even better if you can um, and invite him into every part of your day because he wants to be with you. Um, you know what? I take that back. I am saying you should want to talk to God all day long, myself included, because that means we're in love with the Lord, right? We can't be shortcutting this. <laughs> so my encouragement to you is this. When I did that this morning, I was so tempted to do something else that I really wanted to do. I couldn't wait to do it until I woke up this morning and I just felt the push to go to my Bible, to go to this book I used to read back then before he was born, my son on my back, and um, to just spend a little bit of time with him this morning. And when I did, it was so lovely. It was so fruitful. Um, My daughter hadn't woke up yet, and my morning felt less anxious, less um, stressed. It felt more relaxed. It was a real blessing to me. And then the last four hours were just kind of like, oh, it was kind of rough, but it's okay. I um, mean, I should have asked for God and, and Mary for help during that uh, four-hour period, and I didn't. I just realized that I forgot because that's helped me a lot too in the past. And I'm really struggling asking Mary to help me and God to help me and inviting them into that experience. And I totally forgot about that. Maybe that's why the four hours are so hard for me today. <laughs> but um, anyway, I encourage you. Start putting him first above the things that you value more. If you value certain things more than God, that's probably the place where you should put him first. Um, Because like any relationship, it's only going to grow and deepen with the time that's spent with that person. Even in marriage, it's only going to grow and deepen in intimacy with the time that we spend with that person, the intimate time we, we give to them. And it's the same with our Lord. He wants to be with us. He wants to love us. And if you can get yourself in front of the Blessed Sacrament and adoration, that's even better, even if it's five minutes, ladies. If it's five minutes, if it's three minutes, if it's a minute of your time, I promise you it's not going to waste your time because I've gone into adoration at times where I'm literally in there three, five minutes and it wasn't a waste of time. It didn't. He will not waste your time. Jesus is somebody that will never waste your time. I promise you that. You will leave feeling refreshed and he will give you exactly what he knows your soul needs to be refreshed. I think often our souls are fighting really for refreshment, or, but we're finding refreshment in other things that are such temporary um, highs, if you will. That's not really a good term to use because of, anyway, <laughs> that's not the best term to use, but I think you get what I'm trying to say. Um, getting that temporary um, happy endorphin going, whatever you want to use, whatever term works for you. I, I don't know how to word that right for anybody right now, but um, I digress. Yeah. Um, Jesus is the only thing that's not going to give you that temporary fill. It's going to be the everlasting fill. That's going to fill you and fill you and fill you. And often we resist most what will make us happy. There's a really good book about that by Matthew Kelly. I call it's called Resisting Happiness, and I haven't read it <laughs> to its full like I should. Probably because I'm resisting my own happiness. Right? It's really interesting. Um, it's a It's something I think we have to sit with within ourselves. Why do we resist happiness? Why do we resist what's good for us? And I think part of it is also because we're in a spiritual battle and we need to be aware of that. And if you find yourself or myself resisting something, ask the Holy Spirit and Mary, invite them into that and consecrate that struggle to Mary. So I'm going to do that right after this video. I'm going to consecrate my struggle to Mary and wanting to be with the Lord and spend time with him, like really to sit and shut off my mind, be quiet, and just be with him. Not feel like I have to say anything or say whatever's on my heart, but be quiet. Be with him. Read the Bible with him. Get to know him. Because the Bible says that somewhere in the New New Testament that um, the word of God is living and active. He speaks to us through his word. So I encourage you, um, sit with this message and evaluate in your life where you are most obsessed with things. Um, and if you don't want to, if you don't like that word obsessed, where you're most self-centered, where you, the things you enjoy the most doing, 
that take up a lot of your time, sometimes before our kids, sometimes before our spouses, sometimes uh, before the Lord, right? And evaluate that and put the Lord first in those areas and consecrate it to Mary so she can help you and lead you. That's the best thing about being Catholic, you guys, for those out there that aren't. She is such a gift to all of us, whether you're Catholic or not, because her whole purpose in life was to lead us to Jesus, and it still is. So I encourage you, ask her to lead you to Jesus. Ask her to lead you to her son. Like you asked me to pray for you, ask the Blessed Mother Mary to intercede for you, and she will, and consecrate where you're struggling to her so she can help you just like the Holy Spirit can help you. Please do it. Don't fight it. Just be open to the idea and see the gift of God just flow miraculously in your life and how much your life will change and be refreshed. All right, time for me to go. Somebody's awake. God bless you. Bye.